we are discussing glomus tumor today it's a unique pathology unique identity and it is a diagnosis which is a very commonly missed diagnosis in our opds so it is said that in a normal patient the usual difference between the onset of the symptom and the diagnosis is 3 to 4 years because it is not identified so the clinical judgment the patient will keep coming to the doctor he will say doctor write some medications and go away so diagnosis is a uh, to be made with very high clinical precision so the patient will have a hyperesthesia at a particular point and intense pain on touching to that point specifically the pain will be aggravated by temperature so that if the patient's hand goes into the water like he shriek with pain he scream with pain so it's a intense pain on touching to that particular area now this diagnosis is more commonly seen in females between the age of 30 to 50 years now if you talk about histology it's a hematoma it's basically it arises from the endothelial cells of the glomus body and usually it is cell seen on the peripheral parts of the body so the most common location is the pulp of the finger and the paraangular region near so the area where the patient is uh, doing work with uh, like small work and everything and suppose if anything stick touch here the patient will scream with pain so this uh, can be like in a pulp on the palmar aspect or maybe here or maybe here or maybe here so in region of the nail vicinity it is the most common location now as i told you uh, the diagnosis is to be made with very high suspicion and the diagnosis is predominantly clinical so if you have a specific point which is painful highly tender then you should strongly suspect a glomus tumor the investigation of choice is an mri but the mri can be normal in some cases so mri does not have a 100% sensitivity so some patients may have a normal mri so therefore you should have a high index of suspicion and then there are two tests this is called as a low spin test and hildreth test these are basically important tests. so low spin test what you do is you use a sharp pin or a ball point pen and you just press that point with a pin or with a sharp tip the patient will scream with pain so that is called as low spin test and it is to be done at the exact location where you are suspecting the lesion is there now hildreth test is basically a tunicate test so as we all know that this is a vascular endothelial tumor which is a hematoma so what what we do in hildreth test is we put a tunicate around the limb and the pain will go away so the patient will not if you put a tunicate systolic more than the uh, pressure then the blood supply will not be there and then the pain will go away so hildreth test is basically a tunicate test and it will subside the symptoms now uh, you will have occasionally bluish discretion and swelling which is noticeable but this is not always seen occasionally you may have a bluish discretion or occasionally you may have a small swelling on the nail bed now as i told you most of the location is around the nail so there are many approaches which are, which are described so if it is in the pulp you can remove it directly from the pulp if it is on the nail or beneath the nail you may go on the side of the nail or we may, you may have to remove the nail plate as such so supposedly if it is under the nail plate which is the most common symptom what you ideally need to do is you need to remove the nail plate so if this is a nail plate you need to remove the nail plate by generating a plane between the nail and the the, the pulp basically so you you generate a plane between these two and then you generate a plane between the germinal matrix so this is a germinal matrix and this is the nail plate so two planes so you one plane is this and one plane is this so you clear the nail from these two planes and then you can use a mosquito to excavate after that the nail bed will be there and you will see a lesion like this in the nail bed so you can just incise the nail bed finally and just ex, uh, just expose the lesion so it will be very very small lesion like a millimeter 2 millimeters 3 millimeters lesion and then you elevate the nail bed and excise the frag fragment and block so you will occasionally see sometimes it is 2 millimeters 3 millimeters small lesion 
and once you have excised it, you close the nail bed. Okay, this is you can do with a small vehicle, 6050 vehicle, 540 vehicle. A small vehicle, you just close the nail bed. And after that, you have two options. You can either place the nail again here or you can just leave it open. Now, placing the nail is like a natural dressing. Now, this is a dead nail. So, this is not a live nail. So, this is just a spacer kind of a thing that you have applied. It's not a nail because the nail you have already removed and the nail will regrow from the germinal matrix. But you are just placing it as a spacer, as a natural dressing, just the open part or the uh, open part is not exposed to the condition. So that is it. And if you use that, uh, slowly this nail will uh, shed out and the new nail will start growing. You can fix it temporarily with sutures, maybe figure out it suture or directly, or you can leave it like that also. And then you can just remove that sutures, figure of it sutures after 5 to 7 days and then you can, this nail will be the old nail, this is a dead nail, this will be shed off and the new nail will grow. Now there is a complication which is described which is called as a nail deformity because we are playing with the nail bed, excising the nail bed and things like that. That is why it has to be done with a lot of precision. You don't have to, uh, you have to excise it very precisely, preferably under a microscope. So you have to excise only that fragment and keep the nail bed intact because Occasionally, if the nail bed is not sutured properly, you can have nail deformities. So that is one complication. And occasionally, you, the other complication is the recurrence. So if you are not able to remove it completely, you may develop a recurrence inside. Okay, any questions?